Well, hello, hello. Happy Wednesday, everybody. How are you doing today? Let us know here in the chat. Oh my goodness, well, I could hardly believe it. We are at week seven of our YT course for our advanced coders. Today, we are going to be covering the nervous system, eye and ear. So I hope you're ready. I wanna thank you again for all who, have, who are joining us. Um, and let's go ahead and get started. And we have another winner to announce for our lecture series. So go ahead and stay tuned till the end of class and we will be announcing that winner. We can hardly wait. Okay, and for those of you who are requesting more information about AMCI, you can join, you can um, visit us at www.amcicoding.com. And if you'd like to join one of our courses, go ahead and click on this tab that is labeled courses. A little drop down menu will will appear and we suggest you either join our lecture or our fast track course okay and this is what is included in each one of those you get a little bit more with your with our fast track course such as a, um, a certificate of completion upon completing the course um, these are both mobile device friendly you have access to our private lectures Okay, so if you need some more, more help with um, coding, this is the place to go. Um, and then you do get some scenario help with your um, with your fast track course, okay, and quizzes. All right, so, and those are monthly subscriptions. All righty, and I want to introduce the amazing team. I'm Mrs. Tracy. I am the uh, one of the instructional um instructors here at AMCI and joining me today we have Miss Rochelle. Hi Miss Rochelle, how are you doing today? Hello Miss Tracy, I'm doing great. How are you? I am fabulous. Glad to be here. Me too. I'm so excited. And hey coders, greetings from Louisiana. I hope you're ready for today's class because we're going to have a great one again. And this is kind of like my favorite. Very easy. And um, we're going to talk about eyes and ears and the nervous system. So, wow, let's get it started, Miss Tracy. I'm ready. I am too, but not before we introduce our wonderful curriculum director here at AMCI coming to you from North Carolina. Hello, Mrs. J. How are you today? Hello, hello. How are you, Mrs. Tracy? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Oh, well, hello, coders. Hello, team. I'm ready to get started. Take it away, Mrs. Tracy, or is this my turn? It would be you, Mrs. J, and I will it, hand it on over. It is indeed. All right, so. Okay, so I believe that we're going to announce the winner at the end of this um, presentation. And if you want to win the AMCI lecture series, this is what you do. You comment on this video or a lecture, whatever, whenever you're looking at it, it's either 
if you're looking at it right now, now it live, it's a lecture. If you're looking at it in playback, it is a video. Sorry about that, but go down below and go ahead and comment and tell us how we're doing and tell us what you learned today more so. And there is a sign up link in the, it's in the description. It's also in the description and it's also in the live chat. So if you're looking at the playback, go get your link from the description. If you are live, you can get it right after this presentation in the chat and we will announce the winner after week 10. Yes, yeah, so in two weeks, we'll announce that winner. All right, so let's kind of do a little poll. I like to do this before each class because I want to get your fingers walking and talking. So I have a question. How confident are you with the nervous system guidelines? Type in the chat if you're very confident somewhat confident, barely confident, or something else. Go ahead and type in the chat. All right, now while you're doing that, let's go over the rules. Remember, coders, this is an advanced class and we will be moving at an accelerated pace if you are currently in, an, in a comprehensive coding course, this is for you. However, if you're a new coder or novice, this course may not be for you. Contact our customer service department and we have a class for you. Yes, we have a free class for new coders called the Introduction to Medical Coding course. The link can be found in the description. So go to the description of this video and click on customer service. All right, feel free to watch the playbacks at any time after this presentation and homework. Yes, there will be homework to test your comprehension. It will be available after this live webinar or live production or live, whatever you call it, <laughs> presentation for the next 24 hours. All right. Students should already have some experience with CPT guidelines. And again, class will move at a faster pace than usual. Goals for today. Number one, review guidelines for nervous eye ear section of the CPT manual. Number two, provide you with scenarios to further clarify the more complex guidelines. Guideline three, provide CPT documentation tips. Guideline four, demonstrate the importance of forensic reading. Again, class will move at a faster pace than usual. All right, coders, the outline for this course. Week one, we discussed integumentary system coding. Week two, musculoskeletal. Week three, respiratory, four, cardiovascular, five, digestive, six, urinary, male, female. And this week, week seven, we will discuss nervous eye and ear. Week eight, we will discuss radiology and anesthesia. Week nine, pathology. Week 10, medicine. All right, coders, unfortunately, we will not cover evaluation and management, and ICD-10-CM or PCS. Those topics are a little too comprehensive and we just do not have enough time. Again, coders, class will move at a faster pace than usual. So this is an advanced class. I like to repeat it several times at the onset of the instruction, just so all those latecomers that come in will get and understand the same information as those that came in on time. All right, I got a note. Remember coders, if you have a question, go ahead and type your question in the chat. There are several AMCI instructors who will be there to assist you. Keep in mind the instructor speaking, and at this time, that is me. I'm unable to see your question. However, we have several instructors who will be there to help you. You will know them because there will be a um, right by their P 
picture, there'll be a picture like an AMCI instruction instructor picture followed by the title AMCI instructor Mrs. J or AMCI instructor Ms. Rochelle or AMCI instructor Mrs. Tracy. So I'm not um, saying that we are the ones that are going to be answering you in the chat. We have a quite a few. Hey, Mrs. Tracy, I think I, we didn't acknowledge these um, instructors. So if you can help me, if you're there, I don't know I'm if you're there. there. No, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. J. Okay, yes, we have um, some wonderful instructors helping us today. We have Miss Anna, we have Miss Sarah, Miss Angela's helping us, Miss Valentina. Um, you'll see her at, by Miss Phoebe there. That's Miss Valentina. Um, and we have Miss Tiffany also helping us in the chat. And you never know who else might stop by. Exactly, exactly. So thank you, Ms. Tracy. Yes, we have tons of instructors who are standing by to help you. And of course, I'm going to come into the chat and help you as well. All right, so ask away. Thank you again, Mrs. Tracy. All right, copyright. CPT is copyright of 2019 American Medical Association. CPC is a registered trademark of AAPC. AAPC content found within this presentation is copyright of AAPC. Keyword concept, FTR, Chun, AMCI, Fab 7, Flip Tap, are all trademarks of AMCI. All right, so we've, we got the housekeeping out of the way. We got a little more housekeeping. And these are the general coding guidelines. And these guidelines apply to all surgical procedures within the surgical section, surgery section of CPT. So the surgery section is 10,000 through 60,000, by golly. This is the end of the surgery section for us. So let me go ahead and pause my screen real fast. All right, so again, these guidelines apply to all surgical procedures within the surgery section, all procedures. And these guidelines, think of these guidelines as rules that apply to all. They do, and then we're gonna talk a little bit more about when to apply these rules. All right, so the first guideline I like to take a look at is in this pink box. This is the CPT, surgical package definition. This means that all procedure codes, all surgeries include more than just the procedure. Yeah, there are six other items bundled into it. So when you see a surgical procedure, the evaluation and management service on the day of and the day before surgery is bundled. Um, the local anesthesia is bundled. Immediate post-operative care, including dictating operative notes, talking with the family and other physicians or other qualified health care professionals, writing orders, evaluating the patient in the post-anesthesia recovery area, and typical post-operative follow-up care. These are all bundled into the, the surgical codes. Now, you might see in the integumentary section, some of the procedures don't bundle all of these because it's really not applicable. Let's say you're having um, a suture, you're not going to have a, a you know, post post anesthesia, you're not going to have all that. So a lot of that stuff is not applicable. So pay attention to the guidelines in that section. Another thing that you're going to have to um, pay attention to, another significant guideline is separate procedure. The separate procedure guideline means that that code, the code that has separate procedure written next to it and separate procedure is within the parentheses, that means that procedure should be coded by itself normally, normally. However, it can be coded with another procedure as long as that separate procedure is not related to the other procedure. So if they're unrelated, go ahead and code it. And if you do code it, 
be sure to append modifier 59 to that separate procedure. All right, so now we've gotten the general surgery guidelines out of the way. Let's talk a little bit more about guidelines. There are three types of guidelines that you're going to encounter in CPT. Your first are your parenthetical guidelines. When I'm saying first, I'm not saying that's the first one you're going to see. I'll tell you in a minute what I mean by that. But parenthetical guidelines are guidelines that are found within parentheses, like right here on the right. Second, you're going to see code series or chapter guidelines, and these are directly underneath the blue bold, that title, and typically before the code series. These are code series or chapter, excuse me, code series or chapter guidelines. And then third, you're gonna see your general coding guidelines. And you'll find these on the green pages, just like the ones that we've just reviewed. Now, if we are, if we have all three guidelines in one encounter, your parenthetical guidelines are going to be your highest ranking. You're going to consider the parenthetical guideline overall. Next, your chapter or code series guideline. And third, your surgery guideline. But in best case scenario, if all three guidelines can apply, if you can apply them all, you apply them all. But if a parenthetical guideline is, is um, contradict contradicting a code series guideline, then you're gonna code the parenthetical guideline. And if a general guideline is there and the, the code series guideline contradicts it, you're gonna follow that code series guideline. And finally, if there are no guidelines, just follow your keywords. Read forensically, which means very carefully, and pick up those keywords, and your keywords will drive you to your correct answer. And you can use keywords in addition to guidelines. But remember, guidelines rule. That's the name of this game. So, Oh, I got a couple of things to tell you before we get started. You're not, not a lot, no. All right, so if you like our instruction, if you liked any of the instructions you, that you've seen up to this period, like that video. Tell everyone about us. The more people that watch, the more videos we can make. Think about it. If nobody's watching, we're gonna think nobody we don't have to make videos. So the more people watch, the more videos we'll make. All right, and this is how you do it. Right here, this is the image of the screen that you should be looking at. And see right here, this is how you like the video. So if you wanna go back and like all our videos that you've seen, go and do it. We appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe. Click on that subscribe button. It will tell you every time we upload a new video. All right. I think that's all I need to say. And let's get started. All right. So this is our discussion on the nervous system. Now, the nervous system deals with the brain the spinal cord and the nerves. All the nerves are depicted by the blue lines. So it's important to know the anatomy of the nervous system. So let's just take a moment and let's deal with the nerves because we know what the brain is. We know what the spinal cord is, but let's look at these nerves. And they are typically named for the location on the body. So if you see the cervical right here, the cervical nerves, they're in the cervical region, okay? And the cervical, of course, is the neck. And then you see the nerves in the thoracic region, the sacral, the lumbar, and the sacral. Sorry, I got a little bit ahead of myself. Now, when you see nerve plexus, a nerve plexus is when the nerves 
branch off and form little networks of nerve branches that they just haven't named all of them because there's so many, but here are the nerve plexus. So on the cervical plexus, you've got the lesser occipital nerve, greater auricular, ansa cervicals, transverse cervical nerve, and so forth. So whenever you get a moment, just take an opportunity to kind of familiarize yourself with the language, particularly what's a nerve versus a plexus. But what I think is most important when coding the nervous system as it pertains to the spinal cord is the, you gotta know the, not only the spinal cord, but the anatomy around the spinal cord. Specifically, the bones that protect the spinal cord. Whenever you have an injury and that injury is to the bone, this bone actually, I'll just point out to this one, this bone actually protects the spinal cord. So if you have an injury and any time that injury, um, any time that injury involves your spinal cord, then you're going to have some pain. And depending upon what type of injury, that's going to be the level of severity of that pain. Now, the spinal cord is incredibly delicate and sensitive because we all know if the slightest touch to that cord will, will cause someone to have pain. And I love, I think the spinal cord is so amazing because each one of the bones that make up the spinal column, and there are 33, they are designed specifically to protect the spinal cord. Because if you take each one of the bones and stack them on top of one another, they have holes in the middle. And these holes are referred to as foramen, foramen or foramen. And the hole is where the spinal cord is, is fished through. So if you look at this anatomy, you see that the, the spinal cord is here and you see all these bones sticking out. These are called process. And right here, if you look from this image, the bones sticking out, process. They are designed to protect that spinal cord. And if you look at the process at the cervical region, not as involved. Thoracic region, a little more involved. See, they're more sturdy. And if you go down to the lumbar region, look how sturdy that bone is. And you know why it's sturdy? Because that's where we have most injuries, right there in that lumbar region. All right, so I digress, but um, just want you to know that your spinal cord sits in the foramen and these bones that protect it are the process, the spinous process. Is there anything else I need to tell you? Oh yeah, um, when you have procedures on the lamina, here's your lamina right here sitting in between the process, they can be bilateral procedures. Just wanna point that out and then I wanna go. All right, so let's talk one, let's mention one more thing about the spinal cord. Yes, know your spinal cord regions, all right? So we did say this before, you've got seven um, vertebrae in the cervical spine. That is the first part of the spine, just like that's the first part of the spine. The first meal of the day is breakfast. And when do you typically have breakfast? At 7 a.m., you've got seven vertebrae. The second part of the spine is your thoracic spine. And just like the second part of the, the um, spine, your second meal of the day is typically lunch. And if you're fortunate, you have lunch at 12 o'clock and you have 12 vertebrae. 
in the second region called the thoracic spine. And your third major region of the spine is called the lumbar spine. And your third major meal of the day is dinner. And sometimes people, if they're lucky enough, they can have dinner at 5 p.m. and you've got five vertebrae in your lumbar spine. And then your sacral, ooh, ooh, your sacrum, that's one big old fused bone. Okay, all right. Next, let's talk about some procedures in the nervous system. We're going to talk about skull base surgery. And skull base surgery is performed to remove or repair an abnormality on the bony surface beneath the brain. And this is a, um, looks like a lesion to the skull base. Now we've got some guidelines. Whenever we're coding skull based surgery, you got to remember that procedures typically have three, skull based procedures typically have three procedures. You've got an approach. This is how they are approaching or accessing that lesion or defect. Then the next procedure is your definitive procedure. This is the procedure that definitively treats that um, skull base disease condition or whatever. Particularly, they list the procedures necessary to biopsy, excise, or otherwise treat the lesion. And then third, you could have a repair or reconstruction of the defect following the definitive procedure. So you could have up to three procedures. All right. So one thing that we want to point out is your approach and your definitive procedures should match. So if your approach is the mid middle cranial fossa, your definitive procedure should be at the middle cranial fossa. All right, so your approach should match your definitive and should. And typically, whenever you're testing, it should, but in the real world, hey, you never know. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Um, there are some other procedures too. When you have one procedure that performs the approach procedure and another surgeon performs the definitive procedure and another surgeon performs the repair, each surgeon reports only the code for the specific procedure performed, meaning this is not a co-surgery um procedure because approach procedure is a, its own separate procedure. The definitive procedure is another separate procedure and the repair and reconstruction. In other words, there's no one code for all of these procedures. So you're going to have to bill each physician for each procedure carried out. However, if one procedure does it all, you are going to code each procedure and the subsequent procedures will have a 51 modifier appended to it, okay? So if the one procedure does the approach, you're gonna code that. If that same doctor does the definitive, you're gonna code that. If that same, you're gonna code the repair. You might sequence the definitive first because that's the highest uh, value, RVU value or most, um, complex, then you'll sequence your approach. Next, you're going to put that 51 modifier on it. And then the third, your repair or reconstruction might be 51. It just depends. But you've got to make sure that when you have different doctors, you code them separately. Same doctor, make sure that you pin that modifier 51. And you can find this guideline on pages 414 through 415. All right, coders. Oh, let me just go ahead and review the guidelines. Get your paper and pencil out. 
And here are the guidelines for coding skull base procedures. Number one, you need to know what is the approach. Is it anterior, middle, or posterior? Is it intradural or extradural? Number three, the approach and definitive procedures should match. Four, use modifier 51 if one doctor does both procedures or all procedures. And finally, code separately if different doctors perform different procedures and do not use modifier 62. All right. Now, if you have that written, then you are ready to code this scenario. I'll read the answers first. A, 62230. B, 62230. 62260, C62225, 62160, D62230, 62235-51 modifier, 62160. A 23-year-old female college student who has congenital hydrocephalus was shunted at an early age. Today, she arrives at the ED with complaints of extreme headaches. The neurosurgery department was called and after testing, the neurosurgery surgeon determined that the patient's shunt was blocked and her shunt required immediate replacement of the valve and proximal catheter. The patient agrees and signs consent for surgery. After the patient is prepped, draped, and properly anesthetized, the surgeon incises the scalp, then pulls the scalp back. A burr hole is drilled into the dura mater. A neuroendoscope is used to enable optimal visualization of the ventricular system and to locate the malfunctioning valve and catheter. The underlying cortex is incised and the malfunctioning distal valve and proximal catheter are accessed. The surgeon replaces the valve and catheter, then sutures the shunt in place. Appropriate testing is carried out to determine the new system's functioning. After determining that the shunt is working properly, hemostasis is achieved using the Medtronic bipolar coagulation device. Then all instrumentation is removed, the scalp is closed in layers, and the wounds are covered with sterile dressings. Which of the following codes best describe the surgical procedure? Okay, coders, you have a minute and a half. Okay, how did you do coders? How did you do?
All right, so let's get started and let's see what the answer is. If you said D, outstanding, outstanding. All right, here are the key words. 23-year-old, congenital hydrocephalus, neurosurgeon, shunt, blocked, replacement of the valve and proximal cal catheter, burr hole, drilled, neuroendoscope, ventricular system, malfunctioning valve and catheter, cortex, incised, distal valve and proximal catheter replaces valve and catheter shunt medtronic bipolar coagulation device all right coder so what took place what did we do well all of that the doctor replaced the valve and proximal catheter that's it well, that we're going to code for because down here, the, the, when you're bleed control, you're not necessarily coding for that. All right, so if we look at our codes, we have 62225. This is replacement or irrigation of the ventricular catheter. I like that. What about 62230? This is replacement or revision of cerebral spinal fluid shunt obstructed valve or distal catheter in shunt system. Hey, I like this too. So let's look at these parenthetical guidelines. It says for intracranial neuroendoscopic ventricular catheter placement, use 62160. Hey, okay, so this did happen. However, if you look down below, it says for replacement, and let's here's the code for the um, neuro neuroendoscopy right here. So this did take place, but it's this second guideline, this parenthetical guideline that says for replacement of only the valve and proximal catheter use 62230 in conjunction with 62225 boom it tells you what you need to do so guess what we are going to code 62230 and 62225 yes we are and you know what we're going to eliminate a because this is the code for only 62230. We're also going to eliminate B, 62230, 62160. We're going to eliminate that. And we're going to eliminate C, 62225, 62160. Now let's look at D, 62230, 62225 with a 51 modifier and 62160. Now some of you might be very literal and say, well, hey, it says um, use 62230 and 62225, but it doesn't say you can code it with 62160. All right, so although it's not highlighted, look below. It tells you use 62160 only in conjunction with these codes. And I think our codes fall right in there, okay? 62225 and 62230. So yeah, you code it. If the doctor did it, go ahead and code it. All right, so that is our answer D. And if you got that correct, outstanding, but if you learned something, coders, that is priceless. All right, so this scenario had nothing to do with skull-based surgery. I got another scenario coming right up, and hopefully it does. In fact, it does. So are you ready? Here we go. A61581. 31050 with a 51 modifier. B61580, 61600 with a 59 modifier. C61580, 31050 with a 51 modifier. 
61600 with a 59 modifier, and D61580 6160051. A 29 year old construction worker was diagnosed with a malignant lesion of the brain. His cancer was exacerbating his chronic sinus condition. He arrives today to the OR for removal of the lesion and sphenoid sinus. Dr. Schneck accessed the lesion through the anterior cranial fossa, then performed a sphenoidectomy before excising the extradural lesion. Which of the following codes best describe the encounter? All right, coders, you have a minute and a half. Okay, coders, how did you do? If you, you know what? Before I go on, I have a question for you and you can go ahead and type this in the chat. I wanna know if you were paying attention to the guidelines that I read off earlier, is there, are there any answers that you can eliminate on site? on site. In fact, there are two. Can you type in the chat the two that you can eliminate on site? All right, coders. Remember I said that the approach and definitive procedure should match. And we know there is an approach and a definitive procedure according to the documentation. So that's not it. However, if one doctor performs both, then you should use a specific modifier. And that modifier is 51. So if you're looking at this, the answers, you may be able to tell on site that B and C are incorrect. You could also determine that C on site is incorrect because it's coding for three procedures and our doctor only performed two. Just wanted to tell you that. All right, now the answer is D. Yes, D, and here is how we got to this answer. The first thing that we did was highlight those key words, 29 year old, malignant lesion, sorry about that, um, of the brain, my, my uh, on clicks are off, but please forgive me, cancer, exacerbating the chronic sinus condition. So this patient has two conditions going on, brain cancer and a chronic sinus problem. All right, and this patient is here for removal of that cancerous lesion and 
the sphenoid sinus. And we know that Dr. Schneck accessed through the anterior cranial fossa, performed a sphenoidectomy, then excised that extra dural lesion. All right, so doctor did two things. All right, the um, accessed the procedure, accessed that surgical site through the anterior cranial fossa, and then carried out the extra excising of that lesion through the anterior cranial fossa. So if you look to the right, you got some approach. You got approach up at the top and down below, definitive. And the approach category is the anterior cranial fossa, and the definitive category is the base of the anterior cranial fossa. So that's the same, um, the, the approach and the definitive procedure match. All right, so if we look at the first code, 61580, this is the code for cranial facial approach to anterior cranial fossa. We know that's correct. And extra dural, including lateral rhinotomy, ethmoidectomy, sphenoidectomy without maxillectomy or orbital extenoration. Coders, this code includes the sphenoidectomy. So this doctor doesn't need to code for the sphenoidectomy because it's bundled in this approach. All right. So the difference between 61580 and 61581, this is the same thing, except this code includes orbital extenoration. That means they, they remove the eyeball to carry out this procedure. So there's no mention in our documentation of an eyeball extenoration or orbital extenoration. So we know 61580 is incorrect. And let's just go ahead and eliminate A. All right, Coder, so if we eliminate A like that, B and C were eliminated, D would be our answer. And you know what? If you're taking that exam, you're going to the next question by now. All right, so next, let's take a look at C. 31050, it's coding for 31050, and this code is for sinusotomy. So that's just an incision in the sphenoid sinus. Yeah, so we're, we didn't have that done, we removed it, and even if we did remove it, we're not gonna code for it additionally because it's bundled in that approach code. So we're going to eliminate C just like that. And that leaves us with B and D. And you know what, coders? This, let's do our due diligence. Both are coding for the base of anterior cranial fossa, extra dural approach. They are correct. But guess what? The difference between B and D are those modifiers. B is using 59 modifier. D is using 51 modifier. Our guidelines say use 51 modifier when one physician performs both or all procedures, and our answer is D. All right, coders, if you got that correct, outstanding, and if you, but if you learned something, you know what, coders, that is priceless, and I'm excited for you because you're going to always know it. All right, and before I get going, I wanna tell you about what we have going on at AMCI. If you're interested in becoming a medical coder, whether you want to be a CCS coder or a CPC coder, look at that. Look at that, it says AAPCC. What is that written on that screen? Mm, sorry about that. This should say AAPC, CPC. If you want to be a CPC or a HEMA CCS, AHIMA, CCS, that's facility coding or hospital coding. The CPC, that's outpatient. You know what? I don't like the way that looks. Just give me one second. Somebody's in the background trying to fix it. I want you to see what they're doing. They're doing really good work. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna re, I'm gonna show my screen one more time. Oh, well, it didn't fix on my screen. 
guess I'll have to do it. All right, so I'm back showing my screen. Boom, there you go. All right, so the AHIMA credential is if you want to learn um, inpatient or facility or just inpatient or outpatient facility, there you go, that's your CCS. And your CPC, that's your professional coder coding, there you go, you get 20% off. The coupon is in the description box and that expires 1022. That's next week. All right, so if you're interested, get registered and you could be certified um, in 2020 for 20% off. All right, okay, so that's all I have to say and I wanna turn it over to Mrs. Tracy. Okay, thank you, Mrs. J, and what an amazing deal. I hope we see some of you guys over here in some of our classes. We'd love to have you over um, joining ANCI for either our CPC course or our CCS. They are both stellar, I gotta say. Okay, so I am going to start talking to you about laminectomies and laminotomies. Okay, so First of all, here is your um, lamina. When you see in your CPC um, manual, you'll have some codes that deal with laminectomies or laminotomies. And this is what it's referring to, that part of the spinous process. Um, and what happens with these is um, these are basically laminectomies and laminotomies are two types of spinal procedures that are performed to basically relieve pressure on the spine. Um, a laminectomy, let me go ahead and show you these images. Okay, a laminectomy is a surgical procedure, okay, as you see here, um, that completely removes a portion of that vertebral bone that is called the lamina, okay, and that is the roof of the spinal um, canal. A laminotomy is cutting into the lamina. You can see over on this side um, what a laminotomy is on that first image, and um, that's basically uh, cutting into the lamina and partially removing it, okay? So the difference is that in the laminotomy, it's not completely removing that lamina, but in the laminectomy, it is, okay? And again, these procedures are typically done to relieve pressure off of the spinal cord, and another word for that would be decompression. And often um, the patient, before they get this procedure performed are in pain and after that laminectomy or the laminotomy, the pain will subside because that pressure is being relieved, okay? All righty, so let's go ahead and talk about some guidelines. So when coding these decompression procedures, it's really important to know the approach and the visual visualization that was used, okay? So let's talk about the visualization. On this page, you'll see the definition of that, the bottom here, indirect visualiz visualization is image guidance, um, such as CT or fluoroscopy, that's not um, light-based visualization. And the direct visualization is light-based visualizations, and they can be performed by the eye or with those surgical lupes or microscope or endoscope, okay? So some of the approaches here are percutaneous. Percutaneous is an image guided procedure, um, such as CT or fluoroscopy, and that is indirect visualization of the spine, okay? So percutaneous is gonna be an indirect visualization. Endoscopic is a spinal procedure performed with continuous direct visualization of the spine through an endoscope. So an endoscopic is direct through a endoscope, okay? And you're open, um, that is a spinal procedure performed with continuous direct visualization of the spine through a surgical opening. So that is gonna be direct visualization. Um, and important to note here that all surgical services are presumed open unless it is otherwise specified in your documentation. And some of the guidelines here, again, um, know the approach, okay, such as is it anterior, posterior, lateral, um, know the visualization. So is um, the per procedure and the visualization. So is it percutaneous, endoscopic, open, indirect, direct. Um, also pay attention to the ectomies and otomies that we just spoke about. So remember laminectomies and laminotomies are two very different procedures. Um, they're describing two different procedures. Um, and so good idea to maybe just draw your attention to that when you're making your notations or when you're chunning your manual. 
um, know if you're dealing with segments or spaces and also the number of segments or spaces. So remember the segments are basically you're counting each bone and then the um, the spaces are the, you know, um, the disc spaces that are in between each one of those bones. Okay. Um, know the location on the spine. You'll see a lot of these procedures um, are, you know, pertaining to the location. Is it cervical? Is it thoracic? Is it lumbar? So know that as well. Sometimes you'll just see it referred to as C1, um, T1, you know, L5. So just know what you're, what location of the spine you're dealing with. Um, watch the parent language and um, know that in this section as well, you can use some of those T codes. Um, so just follow your parenthetical um, guidelines, okay? And label your, um, your chun as well, whether you're dealing with segments or spaces, that is really helpful. And when you're um, counting either a segment or space, it's really important to know what you're dealing with, okay, to know how you're gonna be counting it. Okay, now here's our first scenario. We have A63005, modifier 50, 63011, modifier 50, 22586, modifier 51, B63047, 64048 times 2, 22842, C63011, modifier 50, 63017, modifier 50, modifier 59, 22586, modifier 50, modifier 59, 22842, or we have D63047, modifier 50, 64048 times 2, modifier 50, modifier 59, 22586, modifier 59, 22842 or 20936. A 70 year old retired nurse with a history of lower lumbar pain with radiculopathy will undergo bilateral laminectomies with nerve decompression at the L5, L6, and S1 vertebrae. Posterior fusion and instrumentation were carried out to stabilize the defect. All right, coders, you have a minute and a half and your time begins now. Good luck.
Okay, everyone, get your answers in. Got a little bit more time. I did forget to put that little timer thing. <laughs> I forgot to get it started right away, but that's okay. Gave you a little bit extra time. And go ahead. What's everybody saying? How'd you do? Okay, I know this is quite a lot of codes to sort through. However, if I look at this, the first thing that I notice is that B and D have the same first listed code. So usually I'll maybe try to go look at that one first. Um, and then I notice we have some codes here. The last code is from the musculoskeletal. So um, in our A and B. And then we actually have a couple codes in C and a few codes in D from the muscular section, okay, as well as these codes from the nervous system. So let's go ahead and see what's going on here. My answer is going to be A, and my keywords are 70 year old lower lumbar pain with radiculopathy, bilateral laminectomies with nerve decompression, L5, L6, S1 vertebrae, and we have posterior fusion and instrumentation. Um, that was also carried out here. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at 63047, okay? That's in both B and D. And I know that those are incorrect, but let's find out why. Because remember, A is our correct answer here. So we're gonna find out why. And this 63047, if I read the parent, it says laminectomy, facetectomy, and foraminotomy, unilateral or bilateral with decompression of spinal cord, cauda equina and or nerve roots, okay? And um, that's for single vertebral segment cervical. Okay, so, oh, sorry. So if we're looking down at the code, it's lumbar, sorry about that. So I do see we're dealing here with L5, L6, and S1, though that's lumbar and sacral there. However, um, this is gonna be incorrect because although we did have a laminectomy, I don't see anything about a facetectomy which, which is the removal of the facet joint, and foraminotomy, which is cutting into that um, foramen. I don't see anything about that in my procedure here, in my documentation. So I can go ahead and get rid of B, and I can also go ahead and get rid of D, okay? And even if 63047 was the correct answer, if I go back, we have a modifier 50 there, and this code also includes unilateral or bilateral. So we would never put a modifier on this code family here, okay? So that's wrong as well, based off of that. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue on. And I'm gonna look at 63005, which is there in answer A, and that is our laminectomy procedure with exploration and or decompression of spinal cord and or cauda equina without facetectomy. And that's something that you might want to um, box when you're churning these pages. Um, without and with, okay? Because um, you can't code 63045 family there if a facetectomy and foraminotomy was not done, okay? So this code 63001 is the code for just the lamino laminectomy without the other two procedures, okay? All right, so this is for lumbar, okay? I like that. This code, this um, 63001 is for laminectomy without facetectomy, foraminotomy, or disectomy, one or two vertebral segments, lumbar, okay? We have two segments here for our lumbar. We have the L5 and the L6, so I like that code, okay? So I'm gonna go on to 63011, which shares the same parent, and this one is for sacral, okay? So this one includes, again, one or two vert vertebral segments for our sacral, so we have to cover the S1, so I like that code as well. So we would use 63005 to cover those two lumbar, and we can use 63011 to cover that one sacral, okay? So I like that one. I'm gonna place a star there, and that, I see 63011 also in answer C, but I don't see 63005 there, but I do see the 63017. So let's see what that is for, okay? That is for a laminectomy with exploration. It's basically the same as above, but this is for if you're coding for more than two vertebral segments of the lumbar section, and we only have two there. So we this 63005 covers the two that we need, okay? So 63017 is coding for too many, okay? So we can go ahead and get rid of answer C, okay? Now I'm placing that modifier 50 on both of those codes because it says this is for bilateral and it does not include that language in our code. So if it doesn't include that 
language, then you would put a modifier 50 to indicate bilateral laminectomies. Okay, and then finally, 22586, that is from our musculo, um, skeletal section and that is for the arthrodesis and if you're not sure what arthrodesis is it doesn't exactly say that in our um documentation this is actually the fusion okay so you might just want to write arthrodesis equal to fusion because you might just see it list you might just see it um written out like that instead of saying arthrodesis okay so this is arthrodesis presacral inner body technique including disc disc space preparation, discectomy with posterior instrumentation, which was also um, included here. So we have posterior fusion and instrumentation, okay? Include bone graft when performed, L5 to S1, okay? And that's what we have here, L5 to S1, okay? So that explains it perfectly. And we're gonna put a modified 51 there just to indicate multiple procedures, okay? So A is the final answer. All right, everyone, how'd you do? All right, hopefully you did great on that one. And if you didn't get it correct, um, if you learned something, let us know that in the chat as well. And we're gonna move on and I'm gonna talk about the next subject. And we're gonna talk about um, the two major parts of the, um, of the nervous system okay so your nervous system is comprised of two major parts or subdivisions you have the central nervous system um, which basically consists of the brain and the spinal cord as you can see here and then you have your and that's also referred to as cns so if you ever see cns that means central nervous system okay and then the pns or the peripheral nervous system is the other part and that contains all the nerves that lie outside of the central nervous system and the primary role of your um, peripheral nervous system is to connect the um, the central nervous system to the organs limbs and skin and all sensory receptors sensory neurons and your motor neurons are part of the peripheral nervous system okay all right and let's go ahead and talk about some guidelines here okay so mainly on these um you just want to know if you're dealing with um you know unilateral or bilateral procedures um where on the spine um, also, if you notice here, this um, code 64479 to 64487 and 64490 to 64495, these are unilateral procedures, okay? So if you are dealing with bilateral, you're going to have to use a modifier 50, okay? Those aren't inherently bilateral. So if you do have bilateral procedures, make sure you're using that. Um, category 3 codes can be assigned. Those category 3 codes are those T codes, okay? Um, and uh, let's see what else. Just read your parenthetical guidelines. You'll see a lot, as you see here, these are your parenthetical guidelines. So just read these for direction, and, um, and that's pretty much it, okay? And you can find these, these guidelines right here on page 434. All right, so let's talk about the paravertebral spinal nerves and branches. And um, paravertebral spinal nerves are the nerves that are around the spinal cord. Um, and as we have said, the names of these nerves typically describe the location of the spine, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at some of the guidelines. Here we go. Here's our guidelines for our ver paravertebral spinal nerves and branches you can find it on page 435 and um, the first thing is the image guidance um, flora or ct and any injection of contrast are inclusive so these are bundled so if image guidance is performed um, it is included in code 64490 to 64495 okay meaning you're not going to report those separately um, and if image guidance is not used, uh, report 20552 to 20553. And if ultrasonic guidance is used, you're gonna report those T codes, 0213T to 0218T, okay? Those are the category three again. Um, you can find them um, after the category two codes, <laughs> but these are your temporary codes that are, um, most likely going to become permanent codes eventually okay that's for emerging technology and things like that okay 
And again, for bilateral um, paravertebral facet joint procedures, you're going to use modifier 50, okay? So again, um, just to sum up the guidelines here, you want to code according to the level, not the injection. Image guidance is included. You want to use modifier 50 if it is bilateral. Um, if you're using ultrasonic guidance, you're going to use those T codes, 0 to, uh, 0213T to 0218T. Um, if there's no image guidance, you report, you, um, you report codes 20552 to 20553. Okay, and um, facet joint injection is either a nerve block or nerve destruction. So you focus on the joint. One nerve block is two nerves. Okay, so one nerve block is two nerves. All right, and I think I have a scenario for you. So hopefully you're ready. <laughs> we have A, 64445 modifier 50, B, 64479, 64480 times two. C, 64483 modifier 50, 64484 times 2 modifier 50, 0231T, or D, 64483 modifier 50, 64484 times 2 modifier 50. Patient has a history of chronic lumbosacral pain. She arrives to the pain specialist for transforaminal epidural injections for relief. Under ultrasound guidance, the Physician injects 100 milligrams of methyl prednisolone with 2% lidocaine into both right and left foraminal spaces of L3 to S1. Which codes best describe this encounter? All right, a minute and a half, and your time begins now. Good luck, everyone. All right, all right, get your answers in. I have a good feeling about this one. I think based off of the guidelines we just went over, you guys probably nailed this one on site. <laughs> so let's go ahead and figure out what's going on here. So if I look at my answers, um, I see that C and D have the same first listed code. Um, the other two, they're pretty close together. We have some modifier 50s we're dealing with. We have a T code there. So let's go ahead and reveal. Our answer is going to be C. Okay, let's find out why. Our keywords first are history, chronic lumbosacral pain, transforaminal epidural injections, ultrasound guidance, physician injects, methyl prednisolone, 2% uh, lidocaine, right and left foraminal spaces of L3 to S1. Okay, so Let's go ahead and look at this. So I see we're dealing with right and left foraminal spaces of L3 to S1. So I have a little um, illustration here for you showing you the injection here into these foraminal spaces. So those would be the spaces in between L3 to S1. So that would be right here, right? L3 to S1. So how many spaces do you think we're dealing with? If we look at L3 and we go down to S1, the in-between spaces, there's one, two, three. 
So that would be three spaces that we're dealing with here. Okay, so this is this is being injected into three foraminal spaces. All right, so let's go for it. Let's go forward and um, look at these codes. So I'm going to look at A first, six four 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 five, and that is for injection of the anesthetic agent of the sciatic nerve single. Okay, I don't see anything mentioned about injection into the sciatic nerve here. We're dealing with transforaminal spaces or foraminal spaces, and so that's going to be the wrong location. So we can go ahead and get rid of A. Moving on to 64479, that is for um, injection anesthetic agent and or steroid transforaminal epidural with imaging guidance. Um, that's coding for the cervical or thoracic, okay? What are we dealing with here? We have lumbar and sacral. So definitely, again, it's the right um, location as far as the injection, but the wrong location on the spine, okay? So we need to be coding for lumbar and, lumbar, lumbar and sacral, okay? So we can go ahead and get rid of answer B. And then going down to 64483, that shares the same parent language as above, okay? So injection um, into the transforaminal, um, and this is for lumbar or sacral, single level. So 64483 covers for a single level, okay? So that's a good start. However, remember there, we have um, three levels that we're dealing with, okay? So since we have three levels, we have to cover two more. And we have this add-on code down here, 64484, that covers for each additional level. So we need to code that twice, okay? So 64483 would cover L3, and then we would need 64484 times two to cover the, um, the space between um, the L4 to S1, okay? And that looks good. So in, six, in C and D, we have 64483 and 64484 times two. They all have modifier 50 because it says this was, um, inject it into both right and left, so that would indicate bilateral. The difference is C has that T code there. Remember we talked about that. If ultrasound guidance is performed and it tells us right there in our parenthetical guideline to use 0231T. So we, we need to use that T code because we did have ultrasonic guidance here, okay? So we'll get rid of D and that makes C the correct answer. Okay. How'd you do? Did you get that one? Make sense? Let us know in the chat. And with that said, I'm moving on. I have another, give me one sec. I have another section to cover for you, okay? And we're gonna talk about destruction by neurolytic agent, okay? So um, basically your, Destruction of your neurolytic agent. A neurolytic block is a form of a nerve block um, that involves the deliberate injury or the destru destruction of a nerve by freezing or heating, okay? And that would be referred to as neurotomy or the application of chemicals, which would be referred to by the term neurolysis, okay? So we're gonna take a look at how to code um, for these, um, these procedures. Okay. So again, your code range here is 64600 to 64681, and these include the injection of other um, therapeutic agents such as corticosteroids. Do not report diagnostic or therapeutic injections separately, okay? They are included, so we don't report them separately. Also, do not report a code labeled as destruction um, when using therapies that are not destructive of the target nerve, such as pulsed radiofrequency. Okay, you're going to want to use 64999 for that, which is um, basically an unlisted procedure. Okay, um, for codes labeled as chemo denervation, the supply of the chemo um, denervation agent is reported separately. Okay, so you would report the um, supply of the agent separately. Okay, and then also pay attention to those parenthetical guidelines. It directs you on how to code for chemo denervation. If you're coding anal sphincter, it directs you to the appropriate section of your CPT manual, okay, for the various locations. Um, and then um, you're going to report 64633 to um, 64634, 35, and 36 per joint, not per nerve, 
okay? So these are coded per joint, not per nerve. Um, so, and then it says, although two nerves innervate each facet joint, only one code may be reported for each joint denervated, regardless of the number of nerves treated, okay? Um, and then you have your, um, your add-on codes for each additional facet joint at different vertebral levels. Um, and then do not report 64633, uh, 34, 35, 36 for non-thermal facet joint denervation, including chemical low-grade thermal energy or any form of pulse radio frequency. And again, to appropriately report any of these modalities, you're going to use that 64999, again, which is an unlisted procedure. Oops, okay. Sorry about that. I'm going to go back just real quick because I moved on too fast. Um, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about, or sorry, no, we're not going to, sorry, we have another scenario before we talk about that. Okay, here's our next scenario. We have A, 64633, modifier 50, B, 64633, 64634, C, 64620, modifier 50, or D, 64633. A 38-year-old patient with neck pain caused by DDD or degenerative disc disease sustained from a prior automobile accident arrives to the neurosurgeon's office to undergo radiofrequency neurotomy of the two medial branch nerves innervating the superior facet at C1 to C2 and the inferior facet C2 to C3. What is or are the procedure codes for this encounter? All right. You have a minute and a half, and your time begins now. Good luck. Okay, get your answers in. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what's going on here. I see 64633 and answer A, B, and D. Um, C there, I always call it the oddball when it doesn't match up to the rest of them. We have some modifier 50s, and then we have an additional code in answer B, okay? So just some things to think about. We have that bilateral modifier and um, and then, you know, A, B, and D share the same first listed. So let's look. Our answer is going to be B, okay? Let's find out why. My keywords are 38-year-olds, DDD, neurosurgeons, radiofrequency neurotomy, two medial branch nerves, um, superior facet at six C, uh, sorry, C1 to C2, and inferior facet at C2 to C3. Okay, so let's look at that oddball, 64620. And that's for destruction by neurolytic agent, intercostal nerve, okay? So I don't see anything about intercostal nerve. I see two medial branch nerves and I see superior facet, okay? I don't see intercostal. So I'm gonna say that that is incorrect, okay? That doesn't match what our documentation is telling us, okay? All right, so looking down at 64633, this is for also for destruction by neurolytic agent of the paravertebral facet joint, 
okay? And that's exactly what we're going to be coding for here, the facet joints, nerves, okay? Um, with imaging guidance, fluoro or CT, and that is for cervical or thoracic single facet joint, okay? So cover cervical or thoracic, and we are at the cervical level here, okay? And that covers a single facet joint. All right, so how many facet joints do you think we have here? Um, I do like that 64633, okay? That's a good thing because it is in answer A, B, and D. However, we do have that additional one in 64634. That's an add-on code co also covering for cervical or thoracic each additional facet joint. So we actually have two here. Remember, we code these by joint and not by the nerve. Um, C1 to C2, and I think I have an illustration here for you. So it shows you the C1 to C2 joint and the C2 to C3 facet joints. So that's two joints right there, okay? So you're gonna be coding the first one with 64633 and the second one with the add-on code 64634, okay? And if I notice that there's a modifier 50 on um, answer A, I don't see anything about a bilateral procedure here. So I know that that would be incorrect anyways. And I do know that we have two facet joints, so I'm gonna have to code that add-on code, okay? So that would get rid of both D and also A, okay? So B is the correct answer. All righty, makes sense. Okay, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and move on and I'm gonna talk about the last subject before I hand it on over to Ms. Rochelle. And this is for um, talking about chemo denervation, okay? And um, chemo denervation is basically injection of, um, it's pretty much like Botox or a similar agent to treat the focal muscle spastic disorders and extensive muscle contractions, okay? So as you see here, this patient is being treated with um, chemo denervation um, to uh, to help control that that droopiness that she's that she has there in her um, in her on her mouth, okay? Um, and um, and that's pretty much it. Then what happens is the physician will inject that agent directly into the neural structure or muscle to paralyze it and to reduce sensations of pain. Okay. All right, and here are some of our um, guidelines, and you'll find these on page three, 438 and 439. Okay, so code 64600 to 64681 include the injection of other therapeutic agents, and again, do not report diagnostic therapeutic injections separately. I think we already did talk about some of these already, but I'll go through it again. Um, do not report a code labeled as destruction when using therapies that are not destructive of the target nerve. And I think this is a repeat. We did talk about this. Um, so you're gonna remember you're gonna use that 64999, which is the unlisted code. Okay. And then again, follow your um, follow your guidelines there, your parenthetical guidelines. Okay, oops, sorry about that. And um, I know we did talk about the, the rest of these over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand it on over to Ms. Rochelle. She has um, some things that she's gonna talk to you about. Yes, I do, and great discussion, Ms. Tracy, as always. You are wonderful, that was a lot, but really detailed. And I think we all agreed a little, things from there from that discussion right <laughs> coders thank you miss tracy all right coders at this point we are now going to move on to the eyes as they say the eye is the window to our soul <laughs> i wonder if you all would agree to that but anyways so to start with the eyes it's a good idea to talk about the human eye anatomy to start so your eye is a slightly asymmetrical globe. It's about an inch in diameter. And the front part, which is what you see in the mirror, consists of the following. So you have your iris. So the iris is the colored part. Um, then you have your cornea, which is a clear dome over the iris. Then you have your pupil, and the pupil is the black circular opening in the iris that lets the light in. Okay, then you have your sclera. I got my sclera 
uh, on clicks <laughs> there first, but we're going to go back up here. The sclera is basically the whites of your eye. And then over here down actually is your conjunctiva, which is a thin layer of tissue that covers the entire front of your eye, okay? Except for the cornea, okay? And um, also we have the retina over here at the back, which is a layer at the back of the eyeball containing the cells that are sensitive to light. And this triggers nerve impulses to pass via an optic nerve to the brain where a visual image is formed. Very interesting, right? <laughs> All right, okay, so um, under the eye, eye section, there's um, one, I would say a surgery that is a very guideline driven. And that's what we're gonna talk about um, the eye muscle surgery. Okay, so an eye muscle surgery is used to treat condition for strabismus. And a strabismus is a disorder in which the eye doesn't look in exactly the same direction at the same time, as you can see here in the picture. So uh, a person or, um, who has an exotropia um, it's a condition where the eye turns out like so over here. A hypertropia is a condition wherein the eye turns up like so. And just a little side note, I actually have a, a son who had a condition called isotropia. So basically his eye, his left eye would um, turn in sometimes. So it's not a line. So we actually did had him when he was eight year old, um, had him for a strabismus surgery, the eye muscle surgery to correct it. And um, ever since then, it was great now. <laughs> so going back to the strabismus surgery, um, basically during a strabismus surgery, one or more of the eye muscles are strengthened or can be weakened as well or moved to a different position to improve the alignment. So strabismus surgery is usually performed as an outpatient procedure and does not require an overnight or hospital stay. All right. Now, in coding this eye muscle surgery, it's very good um, to have a good look at these eye muscles for us to understand them. Um, so basically, your eye has six muscles, and a good way to remember them is to know your horizontal muscles and your vertic vertical muscles. So to start, the horizontal muscles consist of the lateral rectus muscle and the medial rectus muscle. So if you have this image in your CPT manual page for 5.4, it's actually a good idea to notate them. So you have your two horizontal muscles again, your lateral rectus muscle and your medial rectus muscle. The rest of them are going to be your vertical muscle. So you have your inferior oblique muscle, you have your superior rectus muscle, you have your inferior rectus muscle, and your superior oblique muscle. Okay, so that would help you out because I'm going to give you the guidelines that you need to watch out for when you are coding this. So if you have a, a screenshot on this one, you might also want to notate. So the guidelines here is you have to know what muscles are you coding for. So is it a horizontal or a vertical muscle? We have to know the number of muscles involved and you have to use modifier 59 if a different eye and a different procedure is performed. Again, just a reminder, there's six muscles in each eye. Okay, <laughs> all good on this one. And then we're going to move quickly to the ears. This is not much. Again, we're just going to go over a little bit of an anatomy of an ear here. So are we ready? And then we're going to get to your scenario. So back to the ear. So the ear is made up of three parts. You have your external, external ear, otherwise known as the outer ear. You have your middle ear and your inner ear. So your external ear um, consists of the auricle and the ear canal. So it gathers sound energy and focuses it on the eardrum. You have your metal ear, which consists of a part between the eardrum and the oval window, and the middle ear transmits the sound from the outer ear to the inner ear. And the middle ear also consists of three bones, the hammer, which they call it as the malleus, the inville or incus, and the stirrup or the stapes. The window oval and the round window and the eustrachian tube Hopefully I, I made that sound correct. <laughs> so those are your middle ear. And finally you have your inner ear, 
we're going to talk about inner ear and the uh, one that really stands out here is the your cochlea okay so your cochlea basically is um is the hearing part of the inner ear um, the semicircular canals in the inner ear are part of your balance system. So remember that ears also help to maintain balance. So if you want a screenshot on this one, I like this illustration a lot. And that's it. After this, we're going to go right and dive into a scenario. So if you're ready, I'm going to go ahead. Ooh, forgot my cochlea there. <laughs> so let's go ahead and try this scenario out, okay? So I'll give you the answers first. We have 66710 with modifier LT, B, 66711 with modifier LT, for C, 66720 with modifier LT, and finally for D, you have 66700 with modifier LT. The patient was known or has known chronic glaucoma more severe in the left eye. She's brought to the outpatient procedure suite and anesthetized with a periocular anesthetic. The left eye is prepared and sterile drape, followed by injection of a lid spriculum. A clear corneal incision is made temporarily or temporally with a diamond blade approximately 3.4 millimeter in width. Viscoelastic material is injected into the anterior chamber over the pupil and lens to, incre to increase and maintain the anterior chamber depth. Viscoelastic or viscoelastic is then injected under the iris for 180 degrees to visualize the ciliary body processes with the endoscope. The endoscope is inserted through the temporal incision, viewing the nasal ciliary process. The ciliary processes are coagulated through the endoscope with the endpoint of shrinkage and widening. Assigned appropriate CPT code that best describes the encounter. All right, coders, I'm going to go ahead and start your timer and let's work on this one. Good luck. All right, coders, it's time, it's time. Get your answers in the chat. And then we're going to talk about this scenario, okay? So I have a good feeling you got this one correct. So the answer here is going to be B. And um, basically, if you look at this answer choice, we're just going to have to be forensic on this one. We have just to code what we see in the documentation. So as far as our keywords, we have chronic glaucoma left eye we have corneal incision temporarily or temporary i always say that temporarily but that's temporary temporarily we have viscoelastic material injected into your chamber pupil lens viscoelastic injected and endoscope temporal incision nasal ciliary process coagulated endoscope Okay, so if you look here, all of these procedures are under destruction, and it starts with 
the family code or the parent code is ciliary body destruction, but that 66700 code is for diathermy, and that is not what's going on in our scenario, so we can go right ahead and eliminate D, okay? Next, 66710 on your answer A is another ciliary body destruction. This is for site cyclophotocoagulation transcleral okay this is not what happened because it talked about endoscope in our scenario so we're going to go ahead and eliminate that as well and 66711 the same um, parent code ciliary body de body destruction we like this this is again cyclophotocoagulation and endoscopic and we like this better because we know that in this procedure an endoscope was used so we like that and just to confirm the final answer uh, for c rather 66720 is the same procedure for cryotherapy and not exactly what happened so that confirms that out of all these four and based on our keywords here that drives us to our answer 66711 with modifier LT to represent your left eye. Okay, so how do you feel about that scenario? I bet you had an easy one on that one. Okay, so unless you have any questions for me, I'm going to go ahead. I have another good scenario here coming up. So let me read to you the answers first. We have A, 67311 with modifier RT, 67314 with modifier 59 and LT. For B, you have 67312 with modifier RT, 67316 with modifiers, modifiers 59 and LT. For C, you have 67311 RT, 67314 with modifier 59 and LT, and 67335 with modifier RT. And for D, you have 67311 RT, 67318 with modifier 59 LT, and 67335 with modifier RT. And 11 month old. Actually, you know what? I'm, this kind of bothers me. I'm going to fix that for you guys when you're doing your um, later. But an eight month old infant with strabismus in both the right and left eyes presents today for correction. The patient has left eye hypertropia and the right eye has esotropia. On the right eye, a small portion of the lateral rectus muscle was resected. Adjustable sutures were placed. Next, the surgeon turned his attention to the left eye. The vertical muscle repair was carried out, specifically repair of the superior oblique tendon and muscle. Hemostasis is achieved with sterile saline. The site was secured in layers. Which CPT code best describes this encounter? All right, coders, I'm going to go ahead and you may begin now, but like I said, I kind of want to fix this modifiers here if you don't mind. So I'm pausing the screen before I give you the timer. Can I just want to do this for anyone else who's like me? <laughs> kind of want everybody, everything looks better <laughs> okay i think i got it so let me put the screen back and it's fixed it looks like now okay so i'm gonna go ahead and start your time for a minute and a half and we'll be back to talk about the scenario so good luck coders
All right, coders, I believe that's time. I did move it, so it didn't go all the way. <laughs> but I'll give you a few moments. Go ahead and put your answers in if you haven't done so already. And again, I have a good feeling you got this one too because we did went over our guidelines for this. Okay, everybody's answers in. Okay, perfect. So if you chose answer D, then you would be correct. Great coding. Now, if you choose any other answer, that's okay, because we're going to go through this together, okay? And anytime you see your mistakes, remember that is priceless, okay? So as far as our keywords, it would really help us out on this, sorting this all out. So we have 11-month-old infant strabismus, right and left eye. So that would explain your modifiers there your left eye hypertropia and right eye has isotropia okay one right eye was um lateral rectus muscle was resected okay we need that information adjustable sutures were placed as well on the left eye vertical muscle was repaired um, repair of the superior oblique tendon and muscle Okay, so let's focus first on that right eye. Okay, as you can see, the first listed codes here are right eye. And your right eye involves the lateral rectus muscle. Okay, so remember those lateral and horizontal muscles. So take a look here. 67311, uh, you have your strabismus surgery, resection, or recession or resection procedure. And it talks about one horizontal muscle there. Okay, we'll like, um, well, that one we like, okay? So we have the um, rectus muscle, which is your lateral muscle, which is good. Okay, so we like that one. Now, also, I wanna make sure that I'm having this correct. Okay, yeah, because I'm actually looking at 67312. <laughs> Sorry about that. That is coding for two horizontal muscles, okay? So we are only involved one lateral muscle here as far as your right eye. So we're just gonna have to pick that 67311, okay? So that's our first code. So we like that so far, and now we can eliminate B because again, that is coding for two horizontal muscles. We only get to code one as our documentation says, okay? Now, the next thing we need to talk about is the next eye. On the left, um, it involves a vertical muscle, okay? I actually kind of want to fix this now again, but um, anyways, <laughs> the vertical muscle repair was carried out and that involves your superior oblique tendon, okay? So if you take a look at that code, 67314, still from this family, it does involve a strabismus surgery. Also, this is for one vertical muscle, which would have been correct. But if you are a forensic reader, reader which I know you guys are, look at that 67314. This is for one vertical muscle, but it tells us here that it's excluding the, ex the excluding the superior oblique which unfortunately in our um well i wouldn't i wouldn't say unfortunately but just to refer to our um, documentation here it does talk about the superior oblique muscle okay so because of that you cannot code 67314 you're gonna have to find another code okay again it may be a good idea to make sure to highlight this maybe box this just so you won't oversee it the next time if you missed it right now um 67314 one vertical muscle but it includes your superior oblique okay just want to point that out but then again like i said that would make a and c incorrect Okay, so hopefully you're following along with that one. And now we're looking at 67313 because here you will find your strabismus surgery, any procedure, and look at that. Your superior oblique muscle is here. So it means that your superior oblique muscle is going to be coded 67318 which is what you find here on your answer D, represented by modifier 59 and LT because this is for your um, left eye and this is on another eye. Remember that, um, you know, our, one of our um, guidelines use modifier 59 if it's a different eye, 
Okay. Finally, there's one more here because there were it, the documentation talk about the adjustable sutures, which would be coded as an add-on code 67335, placement of adjustable suture or sutures during astrobismus surgery, exactly what happened here. And um, also to confirm that your parenthetical guideline would also tell you to use 67335 in conjunction with this code, which is what we're using if that documentation is supported, okay? So to complete everything, you have your 67311 with modifier RT, 67318 with modifier 59 LT, and 67335 RT for that sutures, okay? So how'd you do, coders? Hopefully you got this, or better yet, you learned something. And at this point, we're going to just quickly talk a little bit about operating microscopes. So an operating microscope is an optical microscope specifically designed to be used in a surgical setting, tep uh, typically to perform a microsurgery. And just a little bit of FIY, did you know how expensive an operating microscope is? Well, somebody over here <laughs> actually look up eBay and it actually costs about $30,000. Yep, that, that equipment is very pricey and very valuable. <laughs> but as far as coding, so just make sure that you take a glance on your CPT page 468. This talks about your operating microscope and how to code them. So it tells us here as far as the guideline that the surgical microscope is employed when the surgical services are performed using the techniques of a microsurgery, and that would be your code 69990. Now, you will not be coding this in addition to a procedures where the use of the operating microscope is already inclusive component of that procedure. And you will find a lot of these codes here and you definitely need to pay attention to them. OK, make sure you're reading your, your parenthetical guidelines. So all these codes listed here, it means that the um, microscope is going to be already bundled into that. So you do not need to code 69990 in addition to that, to those procedures, okay? And oops, sorry, went too far. So hopefully you don't have any questions here. Just like I said, just be forensic on this one and you'll be good to go. Pay attention to those codes. Which one involves microscope and which one is not, okay? And with that being said, I have a good scenario to practice on that guideline. So I have the answer choices. We have A, 67025 and 69990, B, 67028 and 69990, 69990, C, 67105 and 69990. And for D, you have 67299. A 40-year-old patient was playing racquetball and got hit in the eye. She complains of pain, floaters, and flushes in her left eye. She was taken to the ED, and the ED physician suspects she may have a retinal detachment. Ophthalmology was consulted, and the patient was advised to come to the clinic to see the retinal retinal specialist. The specialist determines that the patient has a small vitreous tear and laser surgery in the office will need to be carried out to repair the tear. The physician used an operating microscope to visualize the tear. The procedure took 10 minutes and the patient is expected to make a full recovery. What codes best describes this encounter? All right, coders, are you ready? I'm going to set your time and you may begin now.
All right, coders, are you ready with your answers? If you are, go ahead and put them in the chat and let's see what's going on in this scenario. Okay, so if you answer D, wow, great coding again, wonderful job. If you missed it, let's go ahead and find out how did we come up with D on this one, okay? This one is, a, I would say it's a little bit not tricky, but you really have to pay attention at what you're coding for. So as far as our keywords, we have a 40-year-old, we have pain, floaters, splashers, left eye retinal detachment, ophthalmology, retinal specialist, we have small vitreous tear, laser surgery in the office, repair the tear, okay, with operating microscope to visualize the tear. So we really have to understand what's going on in this scenario. It's th first of all, all of our answers, well, most of them actually involve that code 69990. As we all know, that is the code for your microscope right the operating microscope now the thing i should be asking about is um remember we re we had this um guideline earlier we need to take a look at this that in order for us to code the operating microscope or the surgical microscope in addition to a procedure is when it is um, used on a services using techniques of microsurgery. So we're gonna have to look back in our documentation, was there a use of this microscope for, um, for a technique purpose, for a microsurgery purpose? Now, looking back, it actually is just documented that they used the operating microscope to visualize the tear. Hmm. So would that mean that we need to code for the operating microscope? So I'm gonna, let you think a little bit more on that. But um, as far as that 67025, let's also revisit that. That 67025 is the... <laughs> Actually, here we go. My uncle is telling me we have to deal with this now. No, we're, we're not going to be coding this um, surgical microscope because it's only used to visualize a tear. It doesn't involve anything about a technique for microsurgery, so <clears throat> only to visualize the tear. So I would say that that operating microscope, anything that has that code will be eliminated. But let's do, as Mrs. J would say, let's do our due diligence. 67025, let's go ahead and take a look at that code. That is coding for an injection of a vitreous substitute. Pars spanner or limbal approach. Well, nowhere does it say in our procedure that talks about an injection, okay, of a vitreous substitute. So we know that is double trouble. We can eliminate A. Right, 67028, that is coding for an intravitreal injection of a pharmacological, in, in, uh, pharmacological agent, which also is nowhere mentioned in your um, scenario here or your documentation, so we cannot code that as well. That is a wrong procedure. Um, seven or 67105 is coding for a repair of retinal, retinal detachment, including drainage of the subretinal fluid when performed. Now remember here, coders, now let's take a look back. There was a mention of a retinal detachment, but that ED physician only suspects that it was not confirmed. The confirmation come from the specialist, which just tells us or documents that there was a repair of the tear and not a retinal detachment. So we cannot code this as a retinal detachment. So that code under this family about photocoagulation is going to be incorrect as well, okay? Retinal detachment is not confirmed. This is not what happened in our scenario. We had a repair of the tear, so we can eliminate C, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. And that would leave us to code 67299. So this repair of the tear would fall on other services for unlisted procedure posterior segments. And that is your codes. <laughs> so tell me what you think about this one, coders. Let me know in the chat. And actually, let me go ahead and have a quick check. I'm actually going to go ahead and dive right into a coding scenarios with you guys. Are you all ready? Because I know you want more, so we can't prove it prepared so we're gonna go right ahead and try this coding scenario right now i'm gonna give you the answer choices we have a 61600 with modifier 62 for b you have 61600 
61581 with modifier 51. For C, you have 61581 with modifier 62. And for D, 61581. Dr. Marley performs a resection of a malignant lesion located at the base of the anterior cranial fossa. The procedure was completed in an extradural fashion. He also performed the approach procedure by way of the craniofacial with lateral rhinotomy, requiring the removal of the right maxillary sinus and right eye. Okay, what is the procedure codes for Dr. Mar or Dr. Marley should report? And okay, coders, are you all ready? I'm gonna set the timer now for our coding challenge for a minute and a half, and your time starts now. Good luck. Okie dokie, the time is up, coders. Go ahead and put your answers in the chat. And let's see what we got here. So if your answer is B, then you would be correct. If not, we're going to go over those guidelines and see where we make our mistakes. And um, it's always good to learn something. <laughs> That's what we're here for. So first things first, I would look at these answer choices and I can see those modifiers there. Okay, now when I'm looking at these keywords, I'm gonna um, keep on, you know, have those as my heads up. Okay, modifier 62 is for um, two surgeons and modifier 51, well, we use that for multiple procedures. So let's take a look at our keywords. We have Dr. Marley, okay, performing resection of the malignant lesion base of the anterior cranial fossa, extradural fashion. We have approach craniofacial and lateral rhinotomy requiring the removal of the maxillary sinus of the right eye. And we are only coding for Dr. Marley here. No other doctor was mentioned. So we definitely have to code all these procedures to um, Mr. Marley, okay? So with that being said, easy. Now we can eliminate A and C because again, this does not involve two surgeons in this procedure, okay? So I know you guys got that one. So next, we're going to go ahead and rem remember our guidelines. So we have to remember our approach and the definitive procedure should match. Okay, we have to take a look at them. Also, again, modifier 51, if one doctor performs both procedures, which exactly is what happened here. So we know we're going to need a modifier 51. So you have a good clue now what, you know, why our answer is B. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at this. Um, codes. So code 61600 is coding for the definitive procedure. In this case, is for resection or excision of neoplastic vascular in, sorry, my box is um, on the way, vascular or infectious lesion of base of the anterior cranial fossa, extradural, exactly what happened in our scenario, right, as far as the definitive procedure. So we like this code. Again, we have to code for another procedure, which would be your approach, okay? Your approach was 61580, 
well no not really i'm gonna have this is the i'm just gonna this is the parent code sorry <laughs> so the approach we have craniofacial or craniofacial approach to anterior cranial fossa Okay, we have that in our um, documentation as the approach. We like this. And we're actually going to go down here at 61581 because it involves extradural, including the lateral ry rhinotomy. Also, orbital accentuation because it talks about removal of the sinus and the right eye there. Ethmoidectomy, sphenoidectomy, and or maxillectomy. So definitely, our approach is going to be 61581. One that would eliminate D because D is only coding for this the approach. It has to be both because Dr. Marley performed both of the procedure procedures. Hence, you also need that modifier 51 there. Okay, so answer is B. So great job for those of you who got it. And if you learn something, as Mrs. J would say, that is priceless. Okay, I have one final challenge for you guys. So are you ready? Let's go ahead and dive right in. So we have answers A, 64479, 64480 times 3, 77003 with modifier 26. For B, we have 64490, 64491, 64492 times 2, and 77003 with modifier 26. For C, you have 64. 520 times 4 and 77003 when modifier 26. And for D, you have 64490, 64491, and 64492. Under fluoroscopic guidance, an injection of combination of steroid and analgesic, analgesic agent is performed on T2 to T3, T4 to T5, T6 to T7, and T8 to T9 on the left side into the paravertebral facet joints. The procedure was performed for pain due to thoracic root lesions. What are the procedure codes for this encounter? All right, coders, I believe it's your time to work on this scenario and I'll put the timer in and I know you'll get this coder, so good luck. Alrighty, I'm back and that only means that the time is up. So hopefully you get a good amount of time to solve this scenario and um, I'll give you a few min moments <laughs> to get your answers in. Are you feeling confident at those answers? You know what? I, I have a good feeling on this one too. I believe so because we did went over this earlier on. So let's take a look. Our answer is da, 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 da. <laughs> answer D. And how did we arrive to the answer? Well, let's go ahead. Let's take a look at our keywords. So we have fluoroscopic guidance, injection, we have steroid and analgesic agent. You have your um, the locations T T to T three, T four to T five, T six to T seven, and T eight to T nine. Okay, left side of the paravertebral 
we're talking about paravertebral facet joints, okay, for pain due to a thoracic root lesion. So if you take a look at these answer choices here, you pretty much have a good idea if you're being forensic because this actually has to be coded according to the location, of course. So we're talking about paravertebral facet joints. So let's talk about that code 64479 and 64480. And look at that. This is for injection of anesthetic agent or and or steroid, which is okay. But look at that. This is for transferaminal epidural with imaging guidance. So this is the wrong procedure because it talks about the long. This is for a transferaminal epidural. Okay, we're talking about as far as the documentation as the paravertebral facet joints. So that would make these answers here that comes from this family wrong. Okay. So I know you guys got that one. <laughs> 64520. Again, if you look at that, it talks about for the autonomic nerves. How would you say? Because if you look at that keyword, first of all, that bold um, text there also tells you the location. And if you look at the code description, the parent code is saying for injection, anesthetic agent. Okay. And look at that 64520, which you will find in your answer C is coding for lumbar and thoracic. But again, this is not exactly what we're looking for. This is for anesthetic agents, sphenophalatine ganglion. That is for the nerve. Okay. So we're not going to be coding that. That's going to be wrong. Now we can go ahead and take a look at this family here that starts with code 64490. You will find that you will see again that bold text there, paravertebral, I can never say that word properly, paravertebral spinal nerves and branches. <laughs> and we're talking about joints and you definitely can see that here. Okay. Now I'm, while we're here also, while I'm pointing that out, you will find the guideline here. It talks about the imaging guidance, the fluoro which actually was in, you know, in your documentation and or CT and any injection of the contrast are inclusive components of 64490. And this just means that this fluoro is going to be bundled into this procedure. So that's another thing that you pay attention to. And um, so if you look at that code 6490, injection, diagnostic or therapeutic agent, paravertebral, See, I cannot say that <laughs> paravertebral facet joint or nerves innervating that joint with imaging guidance that includes your fluoros fluoroscopy or CT. So you can see it's already included in your code description. Um, that means that you cannot code that in addition to this code. Okay, it is already bundled in. So that would actually eliminate your answer B there. Okay, just to prove that that is the code for fluoro there. And again, it is going to be bundled into this procedure. So B is eliminated. So now we're going to go look back 64490 just to do, you know, to so do our work here. Um, that 64490 again is coding for single level. How many levels did we have? Well, let's go that T2 to T3 for single level. Then we need to code an additional code 64491. Same procedure here. This is for the second level to give that to your T4 to T5. And finally, another um, add on code 64492, third, and any additional level. So you have two additional levels there to code actually your T6 and T7 and T8 to T9. So again, it tells us here this is for third and any additional level or levels. So that means that that's, you know, we can stop from there, 64492. So altogether, your code is 64490, 64491, and 64492 to cover all of these levels performed in the paravertebral facet joint. Yep. And I think that's it. So let me know what you think about this one. If you have any question for me, I'm actually going to go right there in the chat, hang out with you a little bit. Meanwhile, I think it's time for me to turn you back over to the amazing Mrs. J. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. J. Hello. It's not me that's amazing. That would be you. You did a phenomenal job. And these coders were rocking it in the chat. I can see that they learned something and I can see that some of them already knew. Outstanding, outstanding. Okay, so just give me a moment for me to show my screen and we're getting ready to 
do some additional resources that's offered through CPT, um, principles of CPT, and that is published by the AMA. There, they have a lot of resources, but I love the principles of CPT. This is one exercise that you can find in the nervous system chapter. So if you wanna practice, go ahead, my advice, screenshot go ahead screenshot if you don't want to see the answers turn your head i'll place the answers on the screen and they're there and then i'm moving on so just watch the playback for the answers and you're good all right also here are some additional internet based exercises these are also found in principles of cpt by ama and if you want a screenshot, go right ahead. If you wanna just wait for the playback, you can do that too. All right, don't forget, next week will be week eight and we will discuss anesthesia and radiology. I'm really excited about it. Now, those both are my favorites, among my favorites, and I'm really gonna I really think you're going to get a lot of it. Now, I just want to make sure that we're ready to announce that winner of the lecture series. Let's see. I think I am. I see the winner. And the winner is Andrea Hundley, Handy. Andrea Handy is the winner of the lecture series out standing and if you want to win the lecture series what is the lecture series well it is amci's private video compilation they're private you can't find them anywhere else you cannot find them on youtube these are the lectures that we teach our students to to nail that cpc c c s p the ccs that's our that's our private lecture series and you will see everything you'll see our in-depth icd 10 cm in-depth e and m and every other cpt chapter that's it so this is how you do it what you do is comment on this lecture below in the description then we're going to give you the sign up link it's also in the description or you can just grab it if you're here live you can grab it right in the um live chat and then we're going to announce the winner at the end of week 10. so if you register today this is week seven you can also register again next week week eight week nine and guess what you have three chances to win so definitely take advantage of it all right coders i want to hear from you go ahead type in the description below let us know what course would you like us to offer next which one i enjoyed this so much i'm ready to get started on the next one and we need your help um icd 10 cm icd 10 pcs hick picks level two or modifiers if none of these appeal to you go ahead and type in that chat i would prefer it down below this lecture type and type down below what it is you would like us to do next some of you have already said it some of you are saying things that we're getting ready to do um so whatever it is no answer is wrong but just want to make sure that we do what you would like us to do all right so i'm getting ready to say so long but before i do that if you have questions or you want more contact our customer service just type in your just you know your web address type in our web address www.amcicoding.com www.amcicoding.com or you can find us on Facebook Absolute Medical Coding LLC definitely and don't forget if you enjoyed this webinar I keep calling it webinar why am I doing that but if you enjoyed this lecture <laughs> 
And if you enjoyed this instruction, please like this video. Tell everyone about us. Don't keep this a secret because this secret will go away if you're the only one watching. Tell everybody the more videos people watch, the more we can make. And this is how, I think that's it. All right, so this is how we want to say, so long, you were awesome, team. You were awesome. I don't even know if Miss Rochelle's here. She should be worn out. I know Miss Tracy, she probably had to take a step out for a moment. But Ms. I'm Rochelle, here. Uh, <laughs> I'm here, Mrs. J. I wouldn't leave you all alone here. But may I just say, Wow Coders, you did an amazing job today, and I really enjoyed my Wednesday with you. And I'm really hoping you're gonna get back and join us again next week because, like Mrs. J said, we all get excited with radiology and anesthesia. So, yay! Looking forward to that, Mrs. J. It's always wonderful to be doing this with you, and thank you so. So much for an amazing class. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you, Team AMCI, all those instructors. That's our team. We're proud of you. Thank you so much. And um, we will see you, coders. We'll see you next week. So long. So long.